guys so in this video we will be discussing about few important api interview questions okay so the most commonly asked was interview questions on api okay i'm talking about the rest apis so soap api soap uis are not being asked much okay so most of the time the focus will be upon the rest apis okay so we have to focus uh, on those aspects only as of now okay so let's have some important interview questions that has been asked to me and most of the candidates as well so let's get started i hope you can see my screen now so we'll be starting the most commonly asked questions on api okay the first and foremost thing we have to understand is from api fundamentals perspective like which all type of questions are asked from the fundamental level okay so we can focus upon freshers or experienced as well with 3 years or 4 years experience so initial level questions what can be asked to them okay so we have to focus upon those questions first so we are dividing it into multiple aspects starting from api fundamentals then api advanced level then security based questions like that we have segregated topic by topic okay so that it becomes easy for you to understand all levels of interview questions okay so we we can start from api fundamentals as of now so first question can be like what is an api and how does it work so it is very fundamental based question like how does api work okay so it's like application programming interface okay so there can be there can be multiple ways how api can operate so from ui when someone click on a particular link okay so internally there can be an api gateway okay so where the security things will be mentioned and the you url redirection mechanism can also be maintained over there like which particular endpoint it will go through we can modify the request as well okay to api gateway so those all functionalities might be implemented might not be implemented okay so it may vary from company to company okay so normally in api there will be one point okay there will be one url endpoint from where user can go to a specific endpoint okay that will be mentioned in the controller so there will be like controller layer service layer repository layer these are the main fundamental aspect while building up your api okay so in building up your api what all things will be required okay so those all aspects we have to understand. So we have to know first the architecture of your API. It depends upon the requirement. What is your requirements all about? Okay. So based upon that, we have to design our API. So we have to start first from database side. Which database we have to choose? Is it relational? Is it non-relational? Why you are choosing that one? Okay. After getting clarification on that, then we have to focus upon building your entity layer and DTOs. Okay. So how the request will come? What all data will be coming from the request side and how response will be shown to the user. Those things should be clear first. And then based upon database tables, we have to create our entity layer to map the database columns with that of Java objects. So those all things should be created first. And then we have to focus upon building the repository layer. So first of all, the architecture needs to be clear, like high level designing needs to be clear before that, like how we can call the repository layer, okay, how we can call the database. Okay, so those are query related aspects needs to be cleared first, then we will be start writing the repository layer, then we will start write, writing our service layer, and then at the end, we will be writing our controller layer. Okay, and then at last, we can add the security on it. So step by step, we have to move ahead. So this is the entire functionalities of like how API works in the backend. Okay. So next question can be like explain the difference between RESTful API, SOAP UI and GraphQL API. So there are multiple level layers of differences are available. Okay. So you can go through uh, Google or you can just search it out. There are like five to six difference you have to go through. Okay. So SOAP UI will support only XML part. RESTful API can support JSON, XML or any other type okay as a request response and the graphql is a different version of the api okay so there are multiple differences so at least five differences it should, it should be known to you okay so you can get it easily from google so yeah next set of questions can be like what are http request methods like a get method post method post method delete method how does it work okay so for get we can add at the red get mapping or we can add like at the red request method method equal to get like that also we can put okay and then whatever we have to fetch data from database we have to provide in get okay for post whenever we have to modify or add any data into database not modify adding data into database or inserting data into database for that purpose we have to go for post mapping put mapping whenever we have to update okay for updation purpose for entire record we have to move ahead with put 
okay then there is a patch as well so if we want to modify specific columns then we have to go ahead with patch so this is also an interview question like put versus patch what's the difference okay and delete means if you want to delete something from database okay so once data is deleted it's gone okay so it will not return me anything so we have to understand the return type of these mappings as well so those are all aspects we have to go through then what are what are the api endpoints and resources we have to explain the concepts okay so those all things i've already explained to you you can go ahead and understand that so there are various levels of api endpoints okay so there can be like get mapping there there is post mapping there are different varieties of endpoints based upon urls which you are hitting okay what user is hitting from the ui depend upon that api endpoints are getting set up at the service registry level and at the API gateway level, okay? So in service registry, we will be registering all those services where those API endpoints are being marked, okay? And then from API gateway, whatever endpoints are being shown or being redirected to, it will go to that particular controller endpoints, okay? So there are various API endpoints concept that we can go through and understand that, okay? Yeah. So then the questions can be on Swagger as well, like how we can make use of Swagger, okay? So it is basically checking the documentation part of your API, like with the help of get mapping, how does it look like, okay? With respect to post mapping, what all things are, uh, are there into in that particular API endpoint, okay? So with that particular URL, there can be multiple things that can be mentioned over there, okay, in Swagger, like what that API endpoint is doing if I'm hitting that particular URL, okay? The responses and what is the status of those responses. Those all things can be documented in the form of Swagger. Okay, so questions can come from Swagger as well, like how can you set up the Swagger in your particular project? Okay, so setting up Swagger, what's the importance of Swagger, and how are you creating the documentation with the help of Swagger? That type of questions can be asked. So you should be prepared on that aspect as well, okay? Then some questions can come from API testing perspective as well. So let's understand what type of questions can come from API testing part. How do you test your API functionalities? Okay, so there are various ways with the help of which you can test your API functionalities. The first way can be like with the help of Mockitos. Okay, we can write Mockito framework and with the help of JUnit Mockito, we can import, okay, org.mockito framework and then we can add it, okay, in the form of add direct Mockito extension over the class and then you can provide add direct test over the methods and then you can do either inject mock or mock. Okay, so there can also be questions asked upon when we, when can we go for inject mock, when can we go for mock, okay? So whenever you want to focus upon a specific class in whose methods you need to call, then that particular class will be an inject mock and the rest of the interfaces or classes will become a direct mock, okay? So that way we can do uh, testing for our APIs, okay? So this is one of the way. So either you can make use of JUnit 4, JUnit 5, okay? Depends upon organizational requirements. Based upon that, you can test your API functionalities as well, okay? So this is one of the way. And you can document it with the help of Swagger, okay? And then you can measure the health of your particular application with the help of Actuator. So these three things should be very much clear, okay? Then explain the differences between API testing and unit testing. Okay, so how can you test your API and how can you do unit testing? So there can be multiple differences. Okay, so from Postman, you can do testing. So we can do integration testing with the help of Cucumber. Okay, so Cucumber helps us to do integration testing end to end. Okay, so that is a basic level of API testing. And unit testing is you are mocking everything out and then you are checking whether your functionalities is being called or not, like how many times your methods are called. That we can do with the help of unit testing. So Cucumber integration testing end-to-end -end framework we need to implement where there can be like features and step definitions, those things needs to be implemented, okay? And then for unit testing, it's just a mocking framework, okay? Then what tools do you use for API testing? We can do post postman from postman also we can do right we can add header we can add security perspective like username password we can provide payload if it is a post call then we can hit with a particular url and then we can see the response then there's a similar to that is jmeter or soap ui is also there in soap ui you can pass the url with the wsdl format okay then you can pass the request and then we can hit 
and we can see the response that way also we can go ahead okay then how do you test the api security vulnerabilities there are various security vulnerabilities can also be there right so that also we can test it so we can implement the security part either it can be like octa or oauth or jwt you can implement and you then you can hit it like whether their security vulnerabilities are present or not you can test it okay by hitting through postman or you can see by debugging as well like where and all it is going through so we can test the api security vulnerabilities okay so where and all this is missing out so you can uh, test it out by giving certain passwords okay in the url or in the request parameter and you can see like what is the response coming and then you can get the idea on that okay so we have to resolve all those vulnerabilities okay then describe your experience with api testing so if you are making use of python there can be pi test or there can be unit test okay so how, what is your experience like they can ask questions on that like how can you mock static methods how can you uh, can you mock constructors or not if it is of private type then how can you uh, mock the private methods okay so those type of questions can be asked okay so you should be very much clear on that when can we go for inject mock what is mock bean okay then what is pi so these type of questions can be asked. So you should be prepared on that level, okay? Then some questions on API security we can see. So there can be like questions on what are the common API security threats like SQL injection, cross-site forging, CORS, okay? So those type of questions can also be coming. So how will you register in a particular uh, application this CORS thing? How can you implement that part? So those type of questions can also be coming. So how can you avoid this SQL injection problems in your API? So that type of question can also be coming, okay? So these things should be clear with it before sitting in the interview for APIs. Then explain OAuth, OpenID Connect, JWT. There's, these are security-based questions that can be asked. Okay, so OpenID Connect, they may or may not ask, but JWT authentication, they will 100% ask you. Okay, so they can either ask questions from JWT or OAuth, okay, or Okta. It, it, they will ask you first, okay, which one you are comfortable with, which one have you used, okay? So based upon that, they will focus and move ahead with your next set of follow-up questions. So you should be prepared on that aspect as well. Then how will you secure your API endpoints? Okay, so there can be API gateway, we can set it up and then we can provide the security over there with the help of JWT authentication. And then we can provide like user-based authentication, okay? So there can be like extending web security configuration adapter and then you can uh, configure method we can override. That is the old way. And the latest way is with the help of security filter chain. Okay, with the help of security filter chain, we can do the configuration in the configuration class. Okay, and then with the application or properties, we can add certain configurations and then we can make it work depending upon a particular rules, whether it's admin role or user role. Okay. So if you want detailed explanation on the spring security part, let me know in the comment box. I will create a specific video on that. Okay. Then describe your experience with API gateway. So if you have made use of AWS API gateway, you can tell, or if you have made use of normal API gateway, that also you can mention like what all things you know about API gateway and you have implemented those all aspects also you can tell. Then the question can be on API encryption and how it is implemented. Okay, so you can go through this uh, basic level things like how API encryption is happening internally. Okay, so there, there can be like salt method analysis can also be there. So that also you can go through like encryption, this decryption, base 64 encoding. So those kind of things you can go ahead with. Okay, then API design level, then they can ask questions upon what are the principles of RESTful API design. So this was asked to me in Nagaro. So you can prepare on this aspect as well. What are the principles of RESTful API design? So you can do Google search and you can get to know like what are the six, seven API principles, RESTful API design principles, and you can go through that, okay? Describe how to design API endpoints for scalability. So whenever you are designing API, you have the, your main focus is to focus upon how can you scale your microservices, okay? So based upon that only you have to design. So how to design API endpoints? So this is basically a high level design things. So it, either you are making use of vertical scaling or horizontal scaling, what you are implementing, okay? How you are defining API gateway, okay? How are you defining your endpoints for scalability purpose? Those are things you have to go through. Then they can ask questions upon API versioning, like V1, V2. What's the importance of that versioning part? How is it implemented in a code? Those things also you have to go through. Then explain the concept of API caching. Caching mechanism is very important for interview. They can ask you like, at the enable caching, what's the importance of that? How will you cache data which are most frequently being taken from database? So those type of questions you should be prepared with beforehand. 
then describe your experience with api design tools like swagger blueprint that i've already told you then api troubleshooting best question can also be asked like how do you troubleshoot api errors then explain common api error codes 400 401 500 i've already created video on this api error codes you can go through that okay then uh, api logging and monitoring tools okay there can be like Jipkin, Sleuth, okay, those kind of API monitoring tools for logging purpose. There will be a centralized uh, monitoring repository, okay, where all logs will be coming from there. We can fetch the data with the help of, with, the, with respect to microservice. So those all things you need to tell whenever the questions can be of API logging, okay, how will you do API logging? So you have to explain with that aspects, like we have to create centralized logging, not for every microservice, different, different uh, repositories. That way we don't have to tell. Like it will become very difficult to debug if you will tell in that way. How will you log specific microservice? Apart from that, create one centralized logging and then tell about the logging purpose for debugging. Okay. Then how will you handle API performance issues? So we have to focus upon modifying your query. Okay. And there are multiple things I've already created video on how will you handle API performance issues? So you can go through that. Then API rate limiter. So there can be certain scenario like in big billion days, there can be millions of hits coming in a particular second. So how will you handle that? So their API rate limiter comes into picture where it will limit to 500 or 1000 or 1 lakh hits per second. It will limit. It will not allow more than that particular threshold. So that is API rate limiter. How will you implement that in the project? That questions can also be asked. So prepare on that aspect. Okay. Yeah. So some scenario based questions can also become like describe an API for a simple e-commerce. So they will give you some scenario and they will ask you to design an e-commerce application based upon this scenario. So that also you need to go through. Then how will you test an API endpoint using Postman? So that is, I think you will be knowing. Okay. Then implement API security measures for sensitive data. Okay. How will you secure your passwords? Okay. Character array, we have to go ahead with not string. Okay. Then there are various security measures you can go through Google and you will get an idea. And how will you troubleshoot an API error using logs? So there will be centralized logging mechanism that I already told you. Then how will you approach towards API testing for a microservice architecture? Okay, so for testing, we can make use of JUnit or we can make use of Cucumber or we can make use of Postman to hit directly your endpoint through server or through local. There are multiple ways to test it. Okay, yeah, so these are the things that are very important from interview perspective. So you should go through those things, which I've already explained you in this, and it will be good to know, uh, good to go. Okay. And for, and more main important thing is microservice uh, design principles. Okay. So there can be very system design place questions on microservices. Okay. So those all things also we have to go through. So similarly, like singleton design patterns, there are multiple design patterns in Java is there, right? So similarly in uh, microservices also, there are multiple design patterns are available. So those things also we, we should be knowing. Okay. Before moving ahead. So those type of questions can also be coming. What are the design patterns you know in microservice? So go ahead and in, uh, learn all those things and then you will be good to crack your API interview questions. So I hope you got the clarity on this. So we'll be seeing you in the next video with the next set of topics. Till then, it's Dave Troy signing off. Bye-bye.